Hi, this is Rachel, and today in our supervision curriculum, we're going to cover topic six, environmental arrangement. So when we are talking about environmental arrangement, we're talking primarily about structuring the learning environment um, so that the learner can be successful. Our job is to set the learner up for success. And one way to do that is to make sure that the environment where we are going to be teaching um, or supporting the learner is structured in a way that the learner will get maximum learning opportunities. So it's also going to help the session run smoothly if you are having a more structured session and you can help reduce the likelihood of overly adapted behaviors by making sure that things are running smoothly from the start. So you need to prepare, make sure you have any necessary items with you in that area or in that room before beginning the session. They might need um, specific reinforcers, they might need water, they might need, um, you might need certain materials. So you wanna make sure that you already have all those things before you um, start your session and start interacting with the learner. Interventions can take place in any environment, but we do need to consider the location when we are um, teaching a new skill. For some learners, they might need more uh, quiet, uh, distraction-free area in order to help them focus. Uh, so if we do need to do that, we wanna make sure that the room where we are starting to teach or the area where we are starting to teach is apart from any distracting activities. Um, however, uh, every individual varies. So this would be sort of um, one version of what the location might look like. Other learners could learn in um, a setting that has more distractions, that has more uh, people. Our goal is to help our learners learn in the environments, the natural environments where learning should be occurring. And if that's not a good learning environment for them yet, then we step it back slowly um, or step it back gradually until we find a level where they can be successful. And then we can gradually add back in some of those distractions and variations um, that then make it much more like the natural environment. You also need to consider the placement of the chairs. Um, if an individual um, has a history of leaving the area or leaving the chair um, when, uh, when they need to be attending and that's something that you want to focus on, then maybe you need to position it so that the learner just can't jump up and run off. Um, this is especially important for um, learners who might not have a good judge of safety skills and may need to be supervised um, at all times. Therefore, we don't want them to accidentally get outside without supervision or things like that. Um, so you might need to consider what that looks like. In contrast, if you've got a learner who um, might engage in behaviors like tipping their chair and you want to make sure that they don't hit their head, um, then you need to position the chair so that it can't be um, uh, pushed back or yeah, so it can't be tipped back. So consider what the placement of, of where the learner is going to be. Consider how that is going to fit um, given their skill set and the goals that you're working on. You also want to consider where are you putting the reinforcers? Um, some individuals, uh, it's good to have the reinforcers visible, but out of reach of the learner. For others, it's good to put the reinforcers away and only bring them out when it's time to engage with those activities. So in that case, you might have like a picture or an icon or the word um, that shows what the learner is working towards instead of having that item right there. 
In addition to considering where the learner is and where the reinforcers are, you need to consider where the provider is going to be. Um, they could be on the floor or in a chair. Um, you want to make sure that the provider is in a position where they can um, support the learner and engage with the learner in a meaningful way. Um, and also be in a position to respond if overly adapted behavior were to occur. Um, for some individuals, the kind of support that, I'm sorry, for some programs, the kind of support that the individual will need will determine placement. Some tasks might be easier to support from across the table, some from side to side, and maybe in the case of um, handwriting or uh, fine motor task, the support person, the provider might stand behind the individual, but only if that is okay with the learner. When you're arranging the environment, you also want to consider a break area. What does this look like? Um, where is this located? You want it to be um, somewhere where there's a distinction between um, time to focus and time to relax. Um, and you want to have items or activities that are supporting um, relaxing behavior or play behavior uh, within that break area, but you don't want to put items or activities that might um, be aversive to that individual or might um, evoke some of that overly adapted behavior. You also, at the end of your session, need to put everything away and make sure that everything's in a consistent place so that it's always where it should be when it's time to pull out certain things. That might be something that the provider does by themselves or that might be something that the learner assists with if that's a possible goal for the learner. When you are conducting a session, again, you have to be prepared. You make sure you have everything ready, your data collection, your reinforcers, the materials that you're going to be using. You don't want to make the learner wait on you, especially if waiting is not a mastered skill for that learner. We should be ready to go when our learner when we bring our learner over or we start to engage with the learner, we have everything ready and the learner isn't having to wait on us. We want to keep a fast pace, but that does not mean that the learner needs to respond at a fast pace. This is on us. We give the learner whatever time they need, but the learner always has something. We always have the next thing ready. So the learner, performs the task. And then when that task is done, the learner gets to engage with their reinforcer. And then we're getting the material set up for the next activity. And then we go straight into the next activity. And the learner isn't having to wait on us to find the right materials, to find the reinforcer, to get the next thing set up. Again, it's fast paced on us, the provider, not necessarily the learner. We need to consider breaks, what type of breaks and how many breaks, uh, the frequency of those breaks matters. Uh, every individual is going to be different. Some individuals might do better with small but frequent breaks. Others might do better with a larger chunk of a structured activity and then a larger chunk of break time. This is going to depend upon the individual, but you need to learn what that individual does best with, and then plan accordingly. You may want to complete difficult tasks towards the beginning of your session when the learner is maybe a little bit more motivated um, for the reinforcers or they're still fresh and their rapport with you is good. Um, as we get further into a session, um, they might not be as uh, able to put in as much effort on some of those more difficult tasks. Sort of along the same vein, you want to intersperse preferred and non-preferred activities. So we don't want to do a big chunk of non-preferred activities 
um, because our learner might burn out before we get to the preferred activities. Um, at the same time, we don't want to start with a ton of all the preferred activities and then only have the non preferred activities at the end because we might not get through them. So mixing them up and alternating is a good way to kind of keep a pace, keep the learner um, interested and motivated to move on um, while still working through those activities that might be less preferred. You need to consider the time of day for the session. Um, some individuals are morning people. Some of our learners are not morning people, and that is okay. We need to figure out what's a good session time for their rhythm and their schedule that works. If you're working with really young learners, they might still be taking naps. So you need to consider um, when is the best learning time for them? Is it in the morning before naps? Is it after um, in the afternoon after they've had a nap and a snack and a chance to wake up? Um, the environment, again, we talked about should not be too distracting for that learner. Some learners can learn new skills in very close to the natural environment. That's great. Let's teach them in those situations. Some learners might need us to scale things back a little bit. And some learners might need a very um, quiet distraction free zone in order to learn a new skill. So Figure out where your learner is, where they can learn and make progress, um, but it doesn't have to be one or the other. It's a, um, there's a range of responses of settings um, and environment arrangements you can do there. Some general teaching procedures for new skills. Um, you wanna make sure that you are breaking down the skill into the different components that are required to successfully engage in the skill. So we might say, oh, morning routine. Well, what's included in the morning routine? What are those steps? How can the learner complete those? Two, you wanna make sure that you are assessing that individual's current skill level um, and that you're gonna be meeting and supporting them at that current level. If they don't have the prerequisites to work on a skill, then you shouldn't be working on that skill. You should be meeting them where they are and helping to support them to continue to grow. And three, we want to refine the procedures as our learner is acquiring each component of the new skill so that um, we can continue to help them move forwards and that we're not holding them back. Um, the new skill should be one that the learner is able to acquire, so we don't teach reading before we teach the letters, letter sound recognition. Reinforcement for new skills should occur on a continuous basis. Every time the correct behavior occurs, the learner gets the reinforcer because it's a brand new skill. We want to strengthen that response, so we're going to reinforce it every time that new skill occurs. Prompting, which we will talk about in more detail um, in an upcoming topic, prompting should occur as much as needed in order to maximize the number of times that the learner performs the activity correctly. So we don't want the learner to practice it wrong or to make a lot of mistakes because that's going to slow down learning time. Instead, we want to provide enough support so that the learner is practicing it correctly repeatedly and then we're gradually fading out that's the next one prompt should be faded out quickly in order to allow the learner to be independent and um, demonstrate that independent skill and reduce the prompt uh, the possibility of prompt dependence um, but also so that we are fading out so that our learners are um, continuing to make progress and we are backing ourselves out. Our job is to work ourselves out of a job. Um, we don't want the learner to necessarily need all these supports um, for the rest of their life. And we want to make the learning environment fun we want to have the session be engaging and enjoyable for our learner. We don't want to 
um, just do boring drills and have them uh, not have fun. Learning is going to go smoother when the environment is a fun environment. So for the assignment, we're going to operationally define arranging the environment um, for the provider to conduct prior to a session. So this would be describing what the uh, provider should be doing to arrange a particular environment for a particular learner. Um, this could read, if you're already familiar with task analysis, this could read a little bit more like a task analysis, and that's okay. Um, but the idea is what behaviors should the provider engage in to make sure that the environment is set up for the learner. And question number two, identify three ways to position the provider and the client in relation to each other and explain one weakness and one strength of each position. So for example, if we're face to face across from a table, if we're sitting next to each other, if we're catty corner, if I'm standing behind, what are um, some strengths and weaknesses of those different types of positions? Think about um, learner and provider preference, think about prompting opportunities, um, materials, and managing um, or responding to overly adapted behaviors. All right, so that was topic six, environmental arrangements. Thank you for joining. If you want to continue to catch these, please subscribe, and we'll see you next time.